hello out there wherever you are. As for me, we are like a little over a week removed from the Super Bowl. Um, and unfortunately, um, that means football season is over. And, um, you know, unless you're the Kansas City Chiefs fandom, every other fandom, you know, had a disappointing season. Maybe some more than most, but mostly about a disappointing season. But I miss football. And although sometimes it upsets me, uh, I, I do miss it a good bit. And it's going to be a long period of time before we get football again. So I took a trip out to Canton, Ohio and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, uh, I've been here several times before and covered it in many different fashions, but the reason why I'm out here today, there's a special temporary exhibit at the Pro Football Hall of Fame called A Legacy Forged in Black and Gold. This is the 50th anniversary of the first Steelers Super Bowl victory, and it has a, in this exhibit is all six Lombardi trophies, all six rings, and I believe every bust of every Steelers Hall of Famer in the hall. So, we're going to step inside and see what it's all about. I wanted to catch this. It's only available, I think, through next weekend. It was actually supposed to be end this weekend. They extended another week. So, let's go step inside the Pro Football Hall of Fame to check out a legacy forged in black and gold. A special Steelers exhibit. And Tom was here. Hey, I'm Patrick Fabian. And you're watching Tom Was Here. <laughs> Here we are. Yes, sir. We are here yet again. We have arrived in. So since I've been here so many times, and especially even last year, I'm gonna cover just kind of the new things that I see in the hall. Um, so it's not gonna be like a comprehensive one. I've done plenty of videos like that. I'll, you know, you can check in under Tom Lewis here, Pro Football Hall of Fame, and there's a ton. So we're just gonna see what's new and what's exciting. Here it is, the special presentation room. Now this, I'm very curious about. So apparently these were in the six trophies that were presented on the field or in the locker room for the Steelers six Super Bowls. But where are they held normally? Are these the ones that are in the front office? We know that they're not the ones that are in, you know, Heinz Field, well, Akershore, um, in those pillars, you know, those ones are replicas, but are these the front office ones or? That's what I am kind of fascinated about. Yeah. And then did they get etched um, after the game? And then they're, they, or are the front office ones even replicas and they're kept somewhere else? I have many questions on this. I'm fascinated by it. This is so these are the official trophies that were presented on the field or in the locker room. No. Yes. Yes. Why is it say already the score? Because they etched them afterwards. They got them laser pointed that quick and then got them out there. No. No, no, no. After. After. Oh. Yeah, after. But what I'm saying is, what I'm fascinated, where are they kept normally? Are these the Steelers front Probably office ones? the Steelers front office. Like so the, currently the Steelers front office has no trophies in it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's what I'm fascinated by. I don't know. Or the, or the Steelers front office ones replicas, because you know the ones in Akershore Stadium in the pillars, in the Lombardi pillars, you know? Those ones aren't real. We know that. But when the Steelers bring out the Super Bowl trophies for like events like the draft party, are they real? Or are they replicas? I have many questions. I have many questions on this. Look at this, they were handing these out to people. It's like a terrible towel type with all the Steelers Hall of Famers in it. That's very, very cool. That's awesome. I'll take that. That's amazing. Free gifts, free gifts. Is this, look at that helmet. I mean, it's sitting there, it doesn't say not to touch it. <laughs> yeah. That's hard. And there you go. See, you said they had no protection. There's our. Right. <laughs> Get 
the autograph ball with the MVP performance on it. Got means your green wrecked helmet there. That's yeah, roughed up. It's fine. Mean Joe Green was limping in that Coke commercial. He went through battles. <laughs> Jack Lambert. Another Bradshaw. Oh, the old Bill Nunn binoculars. Scouted many a Hall of Famer in those binoculars. I like the Steelers' neon sign. I noticed one key detail missing. Hmm. Where are the bus? I don't know. I don't think they. I think they were all in here. I don't think they were. I think they were. Uh, he does make his way to the Hall of Fame. Look at that. This guy. Look at this guy. Now, that's that's the question posed to all. Is that uh, Dan Rooney? Now, the question is, will A.B. make the Hall? I think he'll be waiting for a little bit, if, if ever. You don't quit on the field, and they're going to forget that, so... I think his Hall of Fame numbers, I think he'll be waiting a bit. There's the six rings. And various ones. Who, somebody called this one. I can't remember who it was recently. Hmm? Somebody recently. Some notable figure, I can't remember who it was, called that the ugliest Super Bowl ring they'd ever seen, and that's my favorite. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. Somebody said this recently. They Which said one? the 40. They said because Ben helped design it, and he blames Ben for it. And he says like Ben helped, Ben and Bettis helped to design it, and they called it the ugliest one. I disagree. I I vehemently disagree. I, uh, that's probably my favorite one, to be honest with you. No, it could be that's the first one I saw with my own eyes. That's fair. But ugly, no. I've seen much more gaudy and ugly ones than that. There's the Steelers Hall of Honor here. There are several notable players that are in the Steelers Hall of Honor that should be in the Hall of Fame and are not. Like this guy. Not just stats, not just a Super Bowl MVP, two time Super Bowl champ. They changed the rules, which should be immortal. Is there anybody else notable? Oh, wait. LC is still waiting, is he not? LC is still waiting. Should be in here. James Harrison at some point should be in here, but he'll be waiting, I guess, for a while. Choke slam! That choke slam was too vicious. There's a Steagles program. That's before they were. Did they ever? I mean, I assume they officially got recognized as the Steagles, but this program just says Eagles Dash Steelers. Pittsburgh Pirates. Look at the traffic on a President's Day. Do you notice a common theme? They're all Steelers. I saw a Browns fan walking by. I'm like, keep walking. Keep walking out of my section. Get out of here. You... That I was curious about. 
Okay. So these are all build. See, I was wondering if these were the replicas for the hall or what these were. These are Bill Nunn's personally awarded Super Bowl rings from every Super Bowl. Which is wild. He was in the mall. He was in the mall. He had his hand in all Including the one where he the greatest draft that's ever been where he drafted four Hall of Famers in the same year. Which is outrageous, but that's still wild. The Ben Jersey when he passed for 503 and three touchdowns. Steelers victory versus Green Bay, December 20th, 2009. You existed at that point. You existed. Very cool. Final season of Three Rivers, 70 to 2000. Yes, indeed. Mackey Award 1994, NFL's Offensive Lineman of the Year. Very cool. Oh, I didn't see any of that. I mean, I saw that they did the jersey presentation, but I didn't see they gave out wristbands to everybody. Well, they really raided that elevator. So our Rooney was in the elevator during the Immaculate Reception because he basically was like, oh, this game is over with, I'm heading out. And not only in the main Hall of Fame display is the top of listing of the floors in the elevator, but now they have the actual panel of it. <laughs> they stripped that elevator down for parts. Signed Franco, four years MVP. Signed Lynn Swan MVP. No blunts. The Savage. Now I notice they don't have signed Heinz Blood in there. Because he it's a glaring omission that he should be in the hall. Is he even on the wall here? This guy. He is. He better be. He is. He's on the car. The disrespect. Look, all these Hall of Famers, Ben's coming soon, all these guaranteed future Hall of Famers, and the only glaring ambition, well, Santonio Holmes doesn't have the numbers, he doesn't have the though. The only glaring admission, get him in here now. Do it. You let Devin Hester in here with those stats. You let Harold Carmichael in with less stats. Put him in and put him in now. Retroactively, you should be in first ballot. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm biased. That's fair. I'm biased. Put this man in the hall. End this now. So I guess I didn't realize where this would be. It's actually in this special events room that they um, usually have lock, behind lock and key. Like it's usually just a closed room. And I went, I wonder if they use that room for stuff. Turns out it is for this, which is very, very cool. It's awesome in there. I see you found your way back to the cart. You know, that was a lot bigger on you last year. Did you know? <laughs> this cart is like the best thing they added to this. It's very, very cool. That's amazing. That's very, very cool. Oh yeah, it was it was mainly a running game. This is a this is a Cincinnati Bengals helmet. Yeah. Flip it around. Stream nineteen twenties ball with you. This would be better. This would be better. So this official game worn. Paul Amato hair. Look, he almost got the hair hanging down on. <laughs> Very cool. Now, what I am fascinated by, um, and I was curious, for this special exhibit where they have all the Hall of Fame bust together, I thought maybe they were just a second batch, but no. These are the actual busts that are in the Hall of Fame. They pulled all of them. These are all the Steelers in the Hall of Fame in one place. Now, when I always heard the story of a Steelers bias, that there's too many Steelers in the Hall of Fame, I always thought every team had their own room or some special, you know, they were all grouped together by team, and that's why there's a Steelers bias. But no, if you, in the Hall of Fame gallery, it's by year they were inducted. But this, 
is all of them in the same room and there should be a Heinz Ward there and I will you know this is the hill I will die on in this regard Heinz Ward should be right there next to Bettis and you can put James Harrison on the end and then you can save a spot for Ben Ben can go next to Rod Woodson over on this in the next group because <laughs> that should be the next three to get in but we'll see but wow that's when you stand back from it can I get them all in one shot when you stand back from it truly impressive what are you doing old time football here so the pictures here are yeah. Hey, well, let me yeah, let's strap you up. Look at look at that. Oh, look at that solid leather ring on there. <laughs> yeah, can you barely fit that's the grip on that ball. Hey, you do, so, yeah. yeah, somebody gave you a tap, you mean just it fumbled right like away. You can get a grip on it, but it's just like, it's so like. Yeah. I don't want, like they were this is terrible. Educational birthday. use, I am not a Bengals fan. <laughs> I just want to know what but you this know feels what? like when my head hurts really bad. Yeah, that fit you way better yeah, when, uh, when you're in a smaller head. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be tight on there. Yeah. Ugh. Peyton Manning head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll get that Peyton Manning head on the, on the uh, thing. You wear that long enough. guy <laughs> <laughs> this guy yeah it's very very cool because yeah that's when they always say like there's too many Steelers in there mm -hmm. and when they're in there by year you can't always tell but when you separate them out you're like like for example the Houston Texans just got their first with Andre Johnson it's their first yeah and they'll have another one with Watt JJ will be in there at some point or another. But, yeah. When the Steelers... Yeah, it's quite a few. <laughs> it is quite a few. There, they put... You're going to take your place? Yeah. You're going to take your place? There you go. Now, to be fair, what the Chiefs are going through now, you know, their set of dynasty, what the Patriots had asterisk um what the cowboys even had in the 90s for people to grow up in the 90s you see my team's dynasty was in the 70s i missed i look i got to see two i got to see two super bowl champions by my team that is more than most a lions fan would you know <laughs> lions fans browns fans there's quite a few teams that have never even made it to a super bowl let alone won a super bowl so I'm, you know, but it's been a little while. It's been a little while for the Steelers. I'd like to see them return, but this is, you know, to see the vast majority of Hall of Famers, including several that I watched the vast majority, if not all, of their careers. Paul Malu, Bettis, um, eventually Ben, 
should be Heinz Ward, should be Harrison. If there's not a Steelers bias, should be all these people. But, you know, it's cool to see players that you grew up with make their way to a Hall of Fame career. The Paul and Mullen one especially, I remember watching him get drafted to a Hall of Fame career. That's the first one I remember, honestly. And finally, how fortunate I was to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So this is pretty wild. I, I always thought when they said they have all the d bus on display, if they were going to have them like a secondary bus, but no, they have the actual bus from each. So there are no Steelers bus in the current holiday. But you also see based on the gaps of all of all of the different Hall of Famers that are in here. Instead of that, there's just a display and you can just see over the course. Now there's a long run where there's no Steelers. Oh, nope, Ernie's done. I forgot Ernie. But yeah, as you get move on here, especially the 70s group, look at all those little plaques, plaque, 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 <laughs> plaque. <laughs> and Lou Groza temporarily removed. I wonder why. That's weird. Interesting. But yeah, it's always fascinating to see the greats, the greats who have played the game. Always cool to see their bus. Where is, uh, somebody gave me a hard time about, where's Lombardi at? Somebody gave me a hard time about not visiting Vince Lombardi when I was here, and I figured I'd do them the service this time around. It's Jim Brown. Where is, he's got to be in the first, yes? He's got in the inaugural class, yes, yes, yes. Okay, he wasn't as early as I thought, 1971, um, because I didn't think about how early this Hall of Fame opened in 63, he was still coaching then. Vince Lombardi, of Vince Lombardi trophy fame. Somebody on my channel was like, when I went to Hall of Fame, like, you didn't visit Vince Lombardi. I was like, I visited a bunch of them, I just didn't take pictures with all of them. But here he is, for you especially. <laughs> but also the Vince Lombardi trophy, the man, the myth. Now here's the interesting thing. Len Dawson, Hall of Famer. 57 to 59 Pittsburgh Steelers, not included in the group, which I am I agree with. Because he hardly played for them. He didn't have a Hall of Fame career until he went to, you know, the later ones. Chiefs. Um, but yeah. That's interesting how they differentiate. They're like, well, he didn't really play for the Steelers. He did, but he didn't. So yeah, and it's kind of weird to see all the Steelers missing from this. <laughs> it's just a plaque, like, go see them outside. But, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting to see. You know, as you look at just the random, like, group of heads, like, as you see, like, a plaque form, you're like, oh, yeah, there's quite a few. <laughs> as you walk through the hall, there's there's quite a, quite a few of them in here. Now, where are you going to put 2024 and beyond? I guess this wall? Because this is like the end. Maybe maybe this wall? They're running out of room. They're going to have to build another. They're going to have to put them all on these, these walls here. This wall and this wall. Eventually they're running out of space. I mentioned this before, but like that's right at the end. That's where the other ones start. They're right at the limit here. So this is kind of weird. Of all the plaques that showed like the different sealer ones, they had a plaque with Deion Sanders. And I realized he's in this little case out here with like a highlight i guess they swap these out every once in a while with different little like yeah. and 1989 draft choices florida state is that uh what was the what was his uh leon sandcastle or yeah, leon, sandcastle. <laughs> leon sandcastle 89 draft class why is there no Leon Sandcastle bus in here? Somebody needs to do he's something. a different person. Somebody needs to do no, something he, about that. Leon Sandcastle isn't the easiest thing. What do you mean? That's the... He should be in here, should he not? That's the joke. Should he not? He shouldn't. He, he would get his own thing. Because he's own? a different person. Where's Leon Sandcastle? He didn't have the stats. <laughs> he didn't have the stats to get in? Okay. Fair enough. A flag football uh, exhibit here. Oh, this is from the, this is a Super Bowl commercial. Uh -huh. Or uh, one of those, or some commercial. Yeah. 
I don't even remember that one. I'm wondering in the golf cart with sauce. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey's security guard Here, outfit. Devontae Adams. Parrot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson with uh, Cameron Hayward. Okay, I remember that kind of. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, because it's Bailey and Hutchinson's bellhop costume. And uh, Ken Hayward's over there. Ken Hayward's over there. Alright, I remember this now. From December 17th, 2023, in the game. 31-10 victory over the Cowboys. Cowboys are trash. I like this. Why don't they make... Why doesn't Tennessee just make this their regular... And I know it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't have to make sense. Oh, that's a Will Levis helmet. Will well, Levis used the Oilers helmet. Just make them the Oilers again. It looks way better. It's better overall than the Titans. Got a Tomlin headset here. Tomlin surpasses Parcells. So, listen, Tomlin haters, I hate to break it to you. I can certainly be critical of Tomlin at times, but whether you like it or you don't like it, learn to love it because he's guaranteed a Hall of Famer. Not just in, look at the regular season victories, he passed Bill Parcells. He started off his career with non-losing seasons, which has yet to stop. He passed Bill Cower. He's the all-time winningest Steelers coach. He's getting in the hall. It's just a matter of when he wants to retire. It's going to happen. Steelers 17, Ravens 10, January 6th. Uh, yeah, that would be um, a Mason Rudolph thrown ball right there. <laughs> uh, who knows how this season's going to go. But, yeah. A win is a win is a win. And he has... 173 of them because that was the last game of the season. Yes. Yes, it was. A COVID-19 contact tracer? What is that? Devices recorded data that can be trained to determine who were high-risk close contact? I've never heard of anything like this. Apparently, players had this. That's weird. How could it determine? I mean, that's... I don't, I don't understand. COVID was a weird time. Now, there is one thing they should do here that they don't do. And that is, I want a sticky Lombardi. Like Mike Tomlin said, they have one in the case, and it's very nice, and that's great. But why don't they have, in the same room, a Lombardi trophy that you can pose with? I think they have one at other Halls of Fame that you can touch, you can do whatever you want with, put your fingerprints on it. Like Mike Tomlin said, when you win the Lombardi Trophy, you don't get one that looks like this by the time you get a hold of it. It's been breathed on, bleeded on, sweated on, kissed on, fingerprinted up. Give me a sticky Lombardi in the Hall of Fame. You can do it. Put it right here. For people to take pictures, they can touch all over it, they can hold it up, they can do whatever they want. Within reason, within reason. But it can be done. It doesn't need this glass case on it. You can afford one sticky Lombardi for the hall. Get it done. This is stuff from Rihanna's Super Bowl one. So they don't have anything from the current Super Bowl. I was surprised. Usually they get stuff pretty quick. But this is stuff from last year's Super Bowl. As is tradition, me and him have been sitting on this couch since he was like two years old, basically, or three years old, playing Madden, so. They still only have Xbox One. Come on, Hall of Fame. I saw that some of these people have contributed millions of dollars. You can't get an Xbox Series S or a PS5 in this joint? Make it happen. Get out of here. Just have lockers highlighting the different classes here. 73. I don't know what the rhyme or reason to it is. So it's 83, 88, 93, 98, 2003, then 2013. So it doesn't even... The continuity doesn't <laughs> even match up. But that's cool. 
Are you keep quiet, dear? Keep quiet. Let's see, 2013, Chris Carter. Didn't win. The boy did win Madden. Uh, barely. One, barely. One minute, one yeah, minute, one minute quarters, quarters, and he had Mahomes, and he just fed it to Kelsey as per, I didn't feed as, it. as per I Chiefs threw, tradition. I, no, it's I, literally the only receiver I, they got. No, they forced I threw, it. I threw forced one touch, it. I threw one forced it the entire time. I hit the wrong button to end it. I hit the I wrong one button. Kelsey. I hit the wrong button to end it. Yeah. Because I was playing on Xbox when yeah, I go Yeah, I knew you did. You're going to throw it to A. Mistakes. Actually, you're going to throw Mistakes. To, you're going to throw it to Dalton Schultz. And you know, that was and you know what would have happened? Okay. Willie Gay jumped, was back there. He would have jumped a mile high and he would have caught it over your head. Willie Gay You would have loved it. There, you would have loved it. No. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Oh, I see they have a whole officiating and pro football exhibit. Yet they haven't called a penalty, a holding penalty on the Chiefs in three Super Bowls when they're the most holding team in the league. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe they should learn how to, you know, throw that flag every once in a while. You think maybe? Maybe? And as any good museum, you exit through the gift shop. See what's new and exciting in here. Stellars, right at the jump. Stellars. So, yeah, we threw we decided to throw around on the Pro Football Hall of Fame field. Um, I, I wasn't sure kind of the rules of that. Um, a couple times when I was here, I've seen other people do it, um, but wasn't sure kind of, you know, what the, you know. But they had rules like clean up after yourselves and stuff like that. So maybe a multipurpose field while it's open. Um, but we, it's a 60-yard field, and another father and son that were there, the father was slightly older than I was, the son was younger than my son was, decided to challenge us to kind of like a one-on-one, -on -one, like, tag football game. And I was like, all right, you know, let's give it a shot, even though I'm tremendously out of shape. So here's the highlights of that game. I honestly wasn't expecting on getting rushed, but I appreciate my elusiveness here, although my throw on the run is highly questionable. I, uh, I knew I need to work on that a bit. Uh, also, that ball was horrible to throw. It was very tough. I had the camera propped up just on a table back behind the field, and I was like, well, you know, uh, it was really just for me and him throwing around for a bit, but, you know, we'll see if we can get any action out of this. <laughs> oh, and we did. You're about to see a big man rumble here. And the kid's wearing the jersey here, but look at this Pickens level one handed snag over the middle there. What a catch by the boy. Now, I am tremendously out of shape, and I didn't expect to run the length of this field, but um, <laughs> things change. When I get a little competition in me, I, uh, I will go the distance. That's not slow motion. I'm running as fast as I can. Listen to my child laughing. He's never seen me run like that before. <laughs> oh, God, I'm out of shape. It's terrible. Now, I know I passed my um, competitive spirit along to the boy here um, because this kid's way younger. He's hitting his glory. My son did the hands over the cornerback thing like he was giving up, yet you don't see it on camera, but he actually runs the kid down. <laughs> There's a point where he's, like, giving up on the play. He's like, no, I'm going to keep going. Now, I appreciate my instincts to try to do what I can to evade this. But <laughs> that sticking the foot in the ground and try to spin was not very graceful. So we were down to fourth down here. We knew it was our last-ditch effort for it. I was trying to pass. I was getting pressured, and I was not throwing well in the run with that flat ball. Um, also, I was, you know, rusty and out of shape. But was it a run? No, it was the old, the old special, the old halfback pass, and he goes the distance again. I actually felt my hamstrings for the first time in my adult life. I, uh, it took me so long to recover from this. Now it should be known when you see the garbage passes I threw that this ball is sitting in my trunk for a long while. It is flat as flat, but we got some good work in. I, heard, I actually felt my hamstring for the first time in my life. I was running down the field away. I actually felt my hamstring get tight. I went, mm -hmm. uh-oh, better stop this now. Oh, I'm tremendously out of shape. It's probably the most I've ran in like years. You ran 100 yards. I gotta start doing that. More often. 100 plus yards. My cardio game is shot. It's shot. Well, that'll do it 
from Canton, Ohio, and the Pro Football Hall of Fame, a legacy forged in black and gold. A new exhibit celebrating the Steelers' first Super Bowl 50 years ago. Now, um, I was kind of confused on a couple things. The Lombardi trophies are the ones that were presented to the Steelers on the field and in the locker room. But are those the same Lombardi trophies that are in the Steelers' front office? I would like to know. Um, we found out the mystery on the Super Bowl rings. They're Bill Nunn's Super Bowl rings, so that's pretty cool. He has all six, which is amazing. It was also cool to see all the Steelers' busts in one place at one time. A lot of people say certain teams that have a lot of Hall of Famers, there's some bias about letting future ones in because it's too, you know, waters down the entire thing if it's all from one team. But I think greatness is greatness. If greatness played for one team, you happen to play for the same team, I think you let him in there. Heinz Ward should be in this Hall of Fame. James Harrison should eventually be in this Hall of Fame. If you argue with that, I would like to hear the argument for Heinz Ward, Harold Carmichael. Harold Carmichael was great. NFL receiver, take nothing past him, but at the same time, he does not have Heinz Ward stats. He does have Heinz Ward's resume. Heinz Ward, two-time Super Bowl champ, one-time Super Bowl MVP. Change the rules. Heinz Ward rule of crack back blocks. He changed that. Therefore, he should be here. James Harrison eventually. You know, I mean, like, you know, he might not have, like, the world beater stats, but there was time when he was the most ferocious defender in the league. So maybe eventually he gets in. Um, but they're, they're going to have to add more eventually. Ben's getting in first ballot. Um, I'd like to see. I've heard people are trying to argue against that. I don't see it. I mean, he has the stats to back it up. He doesn't have a Super Bowl MVP, but doesn't have an MVP, but two-time Super Bowl champ, and has all the stats to back it up. So he should be in first ballot. Beyond that, in there, you got this cool towel that they were giving away to everybody that walked in to check out the exhibit. It's a legacy forged in black and gold has every Steelers Hall of Famer on it I think it's really cool that they did that um you know it's not something that uh you know it's um you know sometimes you know when it comes to these things like it's there for you know check it out but it's usually usually there'd be a charge for something like this so it was cool that they just gave it away for free um because there was a large Steelers contingent in there uh to check that out and it was awesome But that'll do it. A legacy forged in black and gold. Special Steelers exhibit that's only running through February 25th, 2024. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Like, support me on Patreon like John Bailey did. You can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, a Tom Lister t-shirt, you can do so. It's a shirt. As well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collectors Association. Links are in the description below. But when it comes to a legacy forged in black and gold, special exhibit at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Canton, Ohio, I can officially say that my name is Tom and I was here. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye, everyone.